Hi everyone, this is Kim from Mark, the author of the book series, The Chronicles of Nadine, and welcome to the Write, Learn and Earn channel. So are you writing the novel? Do you wanna have engaging characters? Well, I'm gonna be doing a series of videos on books that can actually help you to develop your characters. And surprisingly, these books are not going to come from a series of novels. As you know, this channel is, is dedicated to you learning skills that are gonna scale your books from just a, a hobby to an actual book business. And so there are a couple of books that are really gonna help you. The one I'm gonna be chatting about today is Personality Plus. So this book was recommended to me quite a few years ago when I was doing an entrepreneurship training program that was actually dedicated to Christian business people. And I absolutely loved this book because I kind of felt that it saved my marriage, <laughs> even though it's a business book. The book can actually gives you different personality types and, and not the A, B kind of personality types that we're accustomed to. They give four different kinds of personality types. And when you get to understand the personality types, those little quirky things that people have that might annoy you, that you feel, oh, they're out to get me, you begin to realize that those are personality profile characteristics of them. So for example, my husband is a melancholic. He pays attention to little details and he keeps lists. So in the beginning, that like used to bother me a lot. But then when I read this book, I realized that was just part of his personality. And uh, the, and you might think, well, lists are not a big thing, but some of the things on the list were about me. So, <laughs> so well, when I read this book, it actually just helped to calm me down about different aspects of our relationship. And it started opening up my eyes to a whole bunch of different people. So, for example, I am a choleric, and cholerics can sometimes bulldoze through people's feelings and emotions and uh, not actually realize that uh, someone could have taken offense to them. So I had a lot of that when I was younger. I just bulldozed through, I was goal-driven, and I didn't really take into account that other people might be offended by some of the things that I said and did. And this book helped to put things into perspective for me. So why am I mentioning this to you? Because number one, you will need it for for understanding people in your life and your business. But number two, you're going to need it to be able to flesh out your characters. So I'm gonna read a short little extract from this book for you so that you can start beginning to see how your characters fall into these characteristics. So the first one I'm going to read is The Powerful Cleric. This book has got a, a lot of little anecdotes in it that make it fun read, but they also got lists. Now, why would they write that book that way? Because we are different. Um, a sanguine who's a fun-loving person might like the story aspect, whereas a melancholic would like the list aspect. So the book is written for readers of different kinds of personality. And let's uh, pull the, the author Alice band, which you do get um, when you've written your first book, and particularly doing my own illustrations like myself. Okay, so Powerful Choleric is an extrovert and they are a doer and they are an optimist. So do you know people that when you give them a suggestion, some people are like, okay, I'm gonna make a list of all of the things I need to do this project. So let's say for argument's sake, you have a bridge that needs to be constructed. Um, your choleric is the doer. So we, the powerful cholerics, they're born leaders, they're dynamic and active, they are compulsive for the need for change, they must correct wrongs, they are strong-willed and decisive, they're unemotional, they're not easily discouraged. Independent and self-sufficient, they exude confidence and they can run anything. If they're a parent, they tend to extend, exert uh, sound leadership, they establish goals, they motivate their family into action, they know the right answers, and they organize the household. At work, they're goal-orientated, they see the whole picture, they organize well, they seek practical solutions, they move quickly, they delegate work, and there's a whole bunch of the, the different ones. Okay, so we're just going to quickly pop over to the... Um, the melancholics and I'm going to give you an illustration on why we're doing this 
very shortly. So perfect melancholy is an introvert, they a thinker, they can be pessimistic, um, they, um, they've got reflective emotions that are deep and thoughtful, they're analytical, they are serious and purposeful, they are uh, genius prone, they're talented and creative, they can be artistic or musical, they are philosophical and poetic, um, they are appreciative of beauty, they're sensitive to others, they are self-sacrificing, they're conscientious, they're idealistic. They set very high standards as parents. They want everything to be done right. Um, they keep their home in good order. They pick up after their children. They sacrifice their own will for others. They encourage scholarship and talent. Um, and they like to be scheduled and organized. Okay, so let's go back to, to our bridge building scenario. So let's say you have got someone who needs to build a bridge. I do have a guy that is inside my book, who is a builder, um, he lost his leg during, uh, during the building accident, so he's not really able to do construction work the way that he would have beforehand. But on the other hand, I've got another um, builder who has also lost his leg, and there's a like big contrast between the two of them. But let's say you had an able-bodied builder, okay, a choleric would find out there needs to be a bridge, and they would like, I'm going to build this bridge let's go for it, I'm going to put together a team, um, we are going to just tackle this project and it, we're just going to get it done. The melancholic might take a little bit longer to action as they're like, let's do a checklist. How much wood do we need? How many laborers do we need? They're going to analyze it, they're going to do project management and they are going to build it together. Um, and then they would take longer because they've got to go through this process. One of the negative sides of them is they tend to procrastinate because they want it to be perfect. So you would look at the choleric build and you're like, but he has already like put all of the equipment together. He's got a team together. What is wrong with you? Why can't you move faster? So being married to a melancholic, I have to tell you that um, you see this painting at the back here? I painted that painting myself and in the beginning when I started doing these paintings I asked my husband please can you help me with constructing the canvases so we went to a hardware store they bought the frames for us and then uh, my husband would wet the canvas stretch it put it over the frame and then I'd be able to start painting but I, I had a project which was like really really urgent for me and I wanted to get it done and my husband said to me um no you are going to wait until this wood is dry. We're not going to stretch the canvas over it right now. And I'm clear down, like, oh, please. I've, I've been painting like my whole life. I actually don't need to wait for this thing. It has to happen now. And then he said, fine. If you want to do it, you're going to have to bear the consequences of it. And I'm like, yes, you know, you just like, breaking my stride over here. So he put together the canvas and what happened? It wasn't ready and the wood got pulled out of proportions. So I had this skew painting that the only way that I was ever going to be able to hang it properly is if we drilled the painting into the walls. So I learned my lesson that sometimes people who've got different kinds of personalities to you um, can actually add something to your life. So uh, back to the personality type. So now we have the popular Sanyan. And uh, they are extroverts, they're the talkers, they're optimistic, they have got appealing personality, they're talkative, they're storytellers, they're the life of the party, they have a good sense of humor, they have a memory of color, um, they are emotional and demonstrative, they are enthusiastic and expressive, they've got cheerful, bubbly personalities, they're curious, they're good on stage, they're wide-eyed and innocent, and they live in the present, and they change, have changeable dispositions, and they are sincere at heart, and they're always childlike. So there's, there's a lot of characteristics over here. But let's go back to our building of the bridge. So you want to have a couple of sanguines on, on the, the group over here, because building a bridge is very, very hard. Um, 
it's physical grueling where people get tired. You want to have these people on your team. You want to have the person who's like, yes, if you're in medieval times, like my time, they would be the, pe the person handing up the wine, making big jokes, keeping the team motivated. They, they just make the building project a lot more fun. But I don't ask them to sit and do checklists. No. They just want to like, just have fun. They want to be the party people. Okay, so then we've got your peaceful flag matics. So they are introverts, they're the watchers, they are pessimistic. Um, they are low-key, they have a low-key personality, they're easygoing, they're relaxed, they're calm, cool, and collective, they're patient, well-balanced, they have consistent life, they're quiet, but they're witty, they're sympathetic and kind, they keep their emotions hidden. Um, they're happily reconciled to life, they're all purpose driven, um, they make very good parents, they take their time with their children, they're patient, there's, not, there's no need to hurry, um, they can take the good with the, get, the bad and they're not easily upset. So why do you need to have these kinds of people on your team? I had a phlegmatic as an assistant when I was marketing manager of a company. And uh, uh, one of the downsides of a choleric is that they have easily are angered. They have outbursts of anger. However, it doesn't last. The melancholic, on the other hand, they tend to be resentment. So if you get angry with them and you have this outburst of anger, they're going to remember it for a very long time. And cholerics don't always understand that. So a good PA for a choleric to have is a phlegmatic. A phlegmatic is not the person that's going to be motivated to go do things. So my assistant was not a go-getter at all. However, she had a wonderful personality for me because you could point her in the right direction and you could say, Marisha, this is what needs to be done. These are the steps that need to be taken and she would do it and she would sit long as I saw her assist because I shared her with the, the sales director and if someone had a, a quote to do she would sit until nine o'clock at night not complaining she didn't have a car so she just used to say to the sales consultants if you need me to work on the project I, I'm just asking that you actually drive me home afterwards because I cannot get there myself and she would sit until after nine o'clock working on these projects without complaints at all it kind of freaked me out a little bit because sometimes I had projects that I needed to get done and she wasn't moving fast enough. So I know the one day we had a project on and um, my checks never got like, done on time because it was always like tomorrow's another day. Um, and so then the one day I said, to, okay, supplier's coming on Thursday. I'm going to be busy with the project. Can you meet the supplier when they come drop it? And she didn't have the check ready. Um, the, the finance department hadn't issued it yet and she hadn't pushed for it. Um, but when she faced the supplier and the supplier was like, where is my check? That changed dramatically. But uh, she was just uh, probably one of the finest assistants I've had. I've had two assistants that have been really, really good and both of them had that phlegmatic personality because they weren't easily swayed. However, a a person who has got a phlegmatic personality, they reach a point where they're like, I'm not doing this anymore. A sanguine, you can still sway, you maybe like buy them a massage or, or you uh, send them on an incentive trip or, or that kind of thing. Maybe a melancholic, you can point out the different reasons why this project is going to work. But when a phlegmatic says, I'm done, then they are done. There's no ways that you are going to be able to sway them at all. They're like, I've had enough of this project. I'm done. So if you had one of these phlegmatics building your evil bridge, they would be the person that would just plod along. You say, get this dirt from here to there. And they're like, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm going to do it. They just move, they get it done, you pointed them in the right direction, they're going to do it, they're trustworthy, they're reliable, if you have a temper tantrum, they're not going to be a grudge against you, but 
when they've reached their saturation point, they are, I am out of here. I'm not building this bridge anymore. I've got these reasons and it doesn't matter what incentive you throw at them. They're simply not going to do it. Okay, so back to your books. When you get a copy of this book, it is going to help you to change the way you see your characters. Because once you've identified which personality they belong to, you're going to make decisions for that character that are going to make them believable. So when it comes to relationships, if they're married, what kind of spouse would they be? Are they going to be the person that is a fault finder? And you know, melancholic is not intentionally trying to harm their relationships. They're trying to perfect their relationships because they say, I want to make our lives better. If you take care of these different things, it's going to be better. They're doing it out of love for you. And then like the cholerics are like, what the heck? Please don't even start telling me about how everything is wrong and like how it's never going to be working. And, you know, so, so there's a lot of conflict that happens. Can you have more than one personality type? Absolutely. But you tend to have dominant ones. You tend to have ones a little bit higher than others. So the melancholic aspect of my personality evolved over time. I wasn't as strong a melancholic as what I am now. I learned that over time because as an entrepreneur, I started having to get involved with my books. I realized the accountant that I had was managing the books properly and I had to tuck in and check out what was going on and rectify it. And so I became far more detail orientated over time. And you also find that my characters have got a lot of detail about them. I think through very carefully who they are and what they would do, and what would be typical of them to say and do. So really recommend that you get this book because it's going to help you in business. Because remember, we are writing because we want to earn. And it's going to help you with your characters and it's going to help you with your relationships. So I'm going to pop a link at, at the bottom in the description section where you can purchase this book. So it will be direct link to Amazon for you to purchase the book. And I hope that you are going to really love it, really delve into it and be able to bring to light those characters where they seem so believable to people. The best kind of compliment that you can get is when you look in your reviews and people have something to say about that character. So not just the story, because the story is incredibly uh, important but you want people to be emotionally invested in your characters um, i've had a couple of people to say i cannot wait to see what's going to happen in nadine's love life because of these particular reasons and sometimes they get so angry with her because they're like it shouldn't be this way i got one of my beta readers send me a screenshot with a photograph that she had taken of the end of my first book and she said this should not be happening in the second book this is what my expectation was from the first book and this is what you made the character do <laughs> and I had to say just be patient life doesn't always work out the way we want to when we want it to some of the issues you have are going to be resolved a little bit later you just have to be patient with the character so please if you've got if you're busy writing a book and you want to bounce off a couple of ideas from me in terms of your character what what you think that uh, that their kind of personality could be, or you want to have a little bit of advice, please pop it down into the comment section. I would love to hear from you. And uh, having said that, I hope that you have a wonderful day and subscribe. Remember to subscribe. You're not going to get notifications unless you have subscribed. I look forward to sharing more information with you about our different character evolution techniques that we use. Bye for now.